Hello boys and girls, Alex here again to bore you shitless with another one of my videos. However, just remember, I have to make this video for you to watch it. You don't have to watch it just because I made it. After waiting about, oh, well, what is it, I ordered it in January, so what, nearly nine months. Um, my woodpecker drill guide finally arrived. Now, this thing is, I think it's an extended um, packaging, because normally, uh, I think it might only come with a drill guide, maybe a fence, and one or two of these extension rods. However, as some of you may know me, um, I always uh, go for the full set, only because I'd much rather have it and not use it rather than not have it and then find I needed it because uh, when you need it you want it now you don't want it in six months time when it finally gets delivered now personally woodpecker make a great I think they make a lot of great tools um, and most of them you can either buy in a container what they call their I think their woodpecker container with just a plastic box with some foam inside it and it lays a tool out and these boxes come in all different sizes and for the bigger or bigger tools or bigger sets they usually offer you a sustainer option as you can see here now, I don't know whether how much you're going to see of this hang on I'll go and check there, I can, you, you get most of it in anyway. Look, it's not what's in here, it's the concept of it. Sustainers are great. Um, I used to hate them with a passion because every time you wanted something, a tool, it was in the sustainer on the bottom. But since I've got onto their mobile carts, where you can stack the sustainers, um, lock them together and then just unlock and lift it ones off the top, um, they're great and they stand out, the trays are out in the middle of the workshop rather than in uh, cupboards and all that. But anyway, that's beside the point. So you have the option of uh, a sustainer or one of those. However, sometimes for some reason, um, Woodpecker just don't bother putting it into a box or one of these boxes. It came in a cardboard box. And their packaging was great, so bloody great that I had to rip the box apart to get at the tools. And as you can see, it consists of a lot of items. Now, this is not going to be a review of the tool itself, but more so the box that I made for it. And I needed a box only because it comes with two flip stops. I've got two spanners here, but the two spanners only because I've bought the extension rods and they came with their own spanner, a fence, guide, um, chuck key, and the unit itself. And as I said, that needed a box. So, off, it, off I went to SketchUp as always, and there should be a link somewhere where there's an animation of the SketchUp I made for the box that this is going to come in. And voila, here is the box. Again, made out of MDF using my uh, uh, tenoning option of gluing it together. I actually uh, engraved a silhouette of the unit. You'll probably see some sort of a resemblance. Um, on there only because it looks pretty and uh, in six months time I'll uh, when I forget all about having this tool I can look at the box and say oh yeah I remember buying that anyway that's it I actually use on this my what I call my unique locking feature but just as an added extra I put in this rod here to act as a handle now, I don't know how good this is because this is actually quite a heavy little unit. All these stainless rods have a bit of weight behind them. And I don't know where this poops a little 8mm 
Dell, I think it's hardwood rather than pine, is going to hold it. Well, you'll see because I haven't tried it. This is the first time I'm actually going to put this in other than test fitting it as I was gluing it together. So this is really its first maiden load up. Let's look inside the box. As you can see to undo the box, by lifting it up it's automatically locked. By pushing this aside you actually uh, unlock it, you can take the lid off. This is where SketchUp is great. Hang on, I'll go and get my oopsie. I actually made, was my, this was my initial lock I made. Then when I uh, wanted to put this handle on it, I thought, geez, I, I should put, uh, put, I initially I only had that dowel there to stop this uh, right from, I could glue it on to move it backwards and forwards. And I thought I wouldn't mind gluing or put, adding a bit more MDF to give it a greater glue surface so this rod can be more rigid. The only problem is that when, before I had that, that would quite easily pivot around there. But by adding that, um, I added, as you can see, it just clear. oh well you mightn't see it, but if I bring it on sideways, you'll see it just clears it. Well before I put that on, that rod was much closer. The beauty of it is with SketchUp, I could just stretch this out, cut another one and Bob's your uncle. Or your father's brother as well. Anyway, back to the box. Taking off. The box is nothing, uh, sorry, the box is nothing spectacular. Inside, there's two receptacles you'll find that I've uh, flocked green. These are the receptacles for the steel rods. This one is a lift out and you'll see why. The other one is permanently glued in. There's room there for the fence. Well, let's put it in. The fence. Hang on, we'll do it that way. This is, uh, I, they do fit, I know that much, but uh, that's it. The key. Look at that. Fits like a glove. The, these are the flip stops that I actually had to modify. I don't know whether you get it in there or not, because I drew it so accurately in, or precisely in SketchUp, when I put it in, I forgot to allow for the pokey out bit of the nut, not the nut, the bolt on the end there. So I had to recess that a bit so they'll fit in, but they fit in beautifully. That one goes in there. Tight as. That fits. And of course this little unit here for the two spanners I sort of packed this out. Um, I could have made this shorter, but I thought, bugger it, leave it. And I packed it out so it's easy. If I let it drop, it wouldn't be so easy to pick out, but this way I can. And these rods fit in there. Because there's only two of them, I can quite easily get in there and get them out. However, where is it? Oh, yeah, this one here, put this aside, is for these long rods. When you put them in, they stack up, you can see, oops, let's put them in there properly, they stack up, which is well and good, but when you put them inside the box, it's going to be a bit harder to pick them out, and once you've got the first two out, um, the ones there on the bottom is going to be a bugger. So I made this little tray, lift outable, so you can pull it out again. And of course you've got to remember, when you put the unit in, oops, this has got to go all the way up, because this whole box is designed in such a way that the recess there is for the base. It's now going in upside down, but oh, as I said, I haven't uh, done this before, but this is for your edification. The recess is there for the base to sit in. Now I'll put these back in, but I'll do it the other way. 
it sits in there. And this, there's this little, oh, where is it? Come here. There's this little cradle there that'll rest for the jig. I had to do a bit of manipulation to make sure that I could get this in and still fit all the other bits and pieces in. Now this is a very, very tight and exacting fit. As you can see, yep, it fits. It's, it'll, this is the first time I've actually put it in. Um, oh, good God. And again, I can't, I've got no strength in that hand, so it's hard, but as you can see, it's not coming out that easily. <laughs> As always, I said, you're the first to see it. But all I've got to do is do it once or twice, and it will... It will uh, oh, loosen up. But as I say, it's the first time. It's a bit tight there. You are. Now it's coming out. This, actually, this tray is what's catching on to it. What I might finish up doing is getting a bit of sandpaper on there and sanding that down because that's actually catching on that and is lifting up as I'm pulling this out which is hindering the ease of that coming out. There you are. See it's sitting on top of that little tray there. There you are. That's in there. That's in there. So as you can see, uh, as you said, you know, this is the first time I use saw it as well as me. So here we go. Now it'll be interesting to see if this lid fits. Holy shit. As I said, I haven't tried. Ah, there you are. This, oh, come on. That has to go down there. Because it wouldn't let the lid come down. Now, let's just hope that fits. Come on, baby. Ah! Just made it. Oh, I can hear that creak as I lift it up. But there you have it. Anyway, that's, that's about all I'm going to show you at the moment. I've got, oh, I've got to go and, uh, as I said, um, sand that, that, that down. That's not going to do much difference. Um, yeah, there it is. You can see, if you look closely, you can see it lifting out with... Uh, me pulling that up and all it's got to, got to do is take off a thou of an inch sorry talk real real terms a uh, point two or three of a mil and that'll be done but okay boys and girls that's another one of my stupid creations enough to fill in a bit of time while we're still in the covid lockup my arm is still a bit dodgy so there's not much i can do other than fill in time with stupid little videos like this Uru and keep safe. You guys should know me a little bit better than that by now. When I said to you I had to fix this up, I couldn't just leave it at that and I can't just wrap up the video without telling you. I sanded that little bit down as I said and as you can see it just lifts out beautifully. Um, it's a, as I said, it was a very, very precise fit. As I said, this is actually, this bottom part here is captivated in by these side bits. The trays are butted right up against that. So it is a perfect fit. But in doing so, I had to buff that after sanding, buff that and buff that again on the buffer. And now, in all fairness, this is a shout out to my buddy, Rob Castle. He does all his woodworking 
out in his yard. He wheels all his machinery out from his little carport or garage, wheels it out and does all his work and wheels it back in. For me to do my buffing, I have to move this uh, lathe, which is on one set of wheels, about a metre to the left so I can get to my buffer. I'll show you. Uh, as you can see, I've moved it so I can now get to my buffer. And then I have to move the bloody thing back again. So Rob, a big shout out for a guy that perseveres with moving all his tools out and all his tools back. I have only have to do one and that pisses me off. Uru, keep safe.